What's up, everybody? It's your girl T from Adventures of Spirits, and welcome to Spirit Scrutiny. And as stated before, we are in our Red Wine series, and today we will be talking about the great Pinot Noir. So let's get into it, okay? So Pinot Noir um, is a red grape, and um, today I'll be telling you a little more about not just what it tastes like, but also just about the grape itself. So let's get into the actual um, slide here. Where is my slide presentation? Ah, there we go. All right, so Pinot Noir. So basically the name is derived um, from the French words for pine and black. And it's primarily because of the color of the actual Pinot Noir grape. Okay, it originates in Burgundy, France. It thrives in colder climates, but can also actually thrive in some warmer climates. Um, do know that depending on whether it's um, being grown in a cool, cooler versus a warmer climate, that it will impact the characteristics um, and the taste of the actual wine. Um, some may label it as light and dry, um, but it actually also pairs well with fruit, seafood, spicy foods, um, to me, pretty much anything. Um, probably not so much pasta for me anyway, but it's up to you um, whether, you know, you can pretty much drink wine with anything. But when we say that it pairs well with something, it just means that it when you combine the wine along with the flavor of those particular foods, it just brings out a different flavor, okay? Um, now, this actual wine here, can Pinot Noir can range anywhere from $3 to $100,000. Yes, that's not a typo. I meant exactly what I said. It can range anywhere from $3 a bottle to $100,000 a bottle, okay? We will not be featuring anything that's above going towards that high range. So you don't have to worry about any of that, okay? So today we're actually tasting Soho Havana Pinot Noir. It's a 2015, um, and it's actually, this one is actually made in New Zealand. And based on this, the actual alcohol content is 13.5%, which means um, if you was to drink this bottle, of course, you'll feel a little boozy, okay? Um, and it also contains sulfates. And remember what I said before about sulfates. Um, sulfates may give some people headaches. Some people who drink wine, they say, oh, the wine gives me headaches. That's basically coming from the sulfates. But as I said before, if you're already, if you're, if you already have antihistamines in your body, like if you're normally a person that take allergy medication, you really shouldn't be experiencing headaches if you're drinking wine at some point during that day, okay? So let's get into this wine and see what it actually tastes like. Now, um, as you can see, I do have a couple of um, tools here. Um, and as I stated before, I will use, you know, certain tools that I need to use for um, my spirit reviews. Um, in our last review, we did use the aerator, right? Um, mainly because most of the bottles we'll be tasting will have not been opened. Um, but also we use the bottle, the cork opener here, the cork screw here, cork opener. Um, but I also wanted to show you some of the other types of openers, but um, I think I'll go more in depth with these on how to use them when we get to a bottle that I need to use it to open. 
because this particular bottle today is a screw top. So we won't need to use it today, but just so you'll know, this is the other um, corkscrew um, remover here that I talked about previously in my previous video, which you see a scorer, which is here, which is that little knife piece I told you, um, you know, like, like all this looks like a little Swiss Army knife um, thingamajig. Um, but this is a scorer where you actually, you know, scrape the corners of the actual wine bottle. Um, and then you have your cork, the little screw, this right here. And you use that to twist and turn. And then you actually use this as a lever right here, which will actually hold against the bottle for you to actually pull the cork. But we'll show this in one of my other um, features, but I just wanted to mention this because I mentioned it in my episode last week. So I just wanted to make sure and show you what it actually looks like. And these are actually better for, you know, travel and so forth and less bulky than this big one here. Okay. But then you also have your automatic cork opener. Um, I don't particularly care for this. Um, it works. It does just fine. To me, sometimes it works good and sometimes you have to still pull and tug and do all of those things. But we'll also use this in uh, an epi a actual future episode for a bottle where I actually have to open. So for today, we're going to focus just on the aerator since I have not opened this wine um, and this glass because it's a screw top, which also means when I'm done, I can also put the, put the top back on and put it in a refrigerator or um, put it in my um, wine cooler, which is also at a higher temperature than the white wine. White wines usually store at a cooler temperature. So let's taste this Soho Pinot Noir. So Pinot Noir, is, ooh, Pinot Noir is usually dry. That was a pop. That was something different. There was like a little pop on there. I guess it was still very, I guess there was no steel broken on this one. Um, I'm going to use the aerator for this one. Okay, we're only going to taste it. All right, so here it's been aerated and I'm going to twirl it around a bit to aerate it a little more. And uh, the color of this one is a almost like a brown burgundy. Um, it's not a dark burgundy where it just looks almost black. Um, you do see the uh, like a brownish ruby color um, within the wine, as you can see, as I'm turning, as I'm spinning it, as the, the light hits it, you should be able to see a little more of the color. Um, and here it doesn't look like, it's actually um, heavy body, which means it has some, um, the legs are rather slow um, and they're actually thick. So this is heavy body because it's taking the legs, um, the little legs that go down the glass is actually taking them a little time to come down the glass. But let's now go into the aroma. The smell of this one is uh, somewhat faint. It's not as bold as some of the previous red ones we smelled. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it gives me I do smell fruit. Well, of course, it's a grape, but when I say fruit, I mean, I'm smelling um, blackberry, raspberry. I do smell some of the oak. But to me, um, and it may not be for others, but to me, I also... It is also giving off a, almost like a very faint chocolate type smell, um, aroma. But I'm curious to know if I'm going to taste what I'm smelling here. So 
Let's try this Pinot Noir. So my first taste, I don't count because it's always the first time that you taste it. You want to make sure that you swish it around your mouth and so forth because the first taste is never really the original taste because you're just introducing it to your palate. So let's taste the real taste. It has, um, I could taste the tannin, um, so it's very dry. Um, introducing it to my palate is um, is flavor forward, but it's funny because it's a short finish because the flavor goes away, but the dryness is sustaining. So um, short finish. And it really didn't give me a chance to really tell you what I taste, which means I'm gonna have to taste it again and, and think quickly. Um, but I wanted to feel how it felt in my on my palate and um, in my mouth. Um, in terms of the feel, is very dry. It's not smooth or anything like that. It's just very dry, dry to the point where on the sides of my tongue, on my tongue, front of my tongue, under my tongue. Wherever the wine hit, it was actually very dry. But um, the flavor is 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 good. Um, is not you know some of the best that I'm you know used to um, tasting. But I'm gonna try it again and tell you what the actual taste is. Blackberry. oak. I'm also tasting, I don't know, almost something, almost grassy, you know, something herbal, um, but I can't make out what the flavor is. And when the flavor dissipates, I'm going to, you know how you blow air in your mouth to sort of, you know, revitalize whatever you just taste. Can't make out that flavor. It's almost as if it, it sort of reminds me of if you had a glass of wine and you got down to the bottom of it and somebody put water in your glass and then you drank it because it had the residue of the wine. That that's somewhat what I'm tasting with this. I'm not a fan of this one, unfortunately. And it might just be the specific brand. Um, it doesn't mean that all Pinot Noirs. Um, have this same exact flavor, but just as I stated, um, this grows all over, even though it originates, you know, um, in France. Um, the climate and where it grows will determine what the taste will be as well as its characteristics. So um, since this is in New Zealand, and I'm trying to think, I'm, my assumption is that New Zealand is going to be a cooler climate. Well, then maybe if, uh, if it was a Pinot Noir from a warmer climate, maybe it will taste a little different. And um, maybe um, I'm pretty sure somewhere in my collection down here, I have another Pinot Noir um, that may have came from a warmer climate. And I'll review and taste that at a later time to see um, what the difference is. But um, in terms of the Soho Pinot Noir, not a fan too much. Um, this bottle um, actually cost me um, 18 bucks. It was just $18.99. Um, and usually a Pinot Noir is pretty good. Um, you know, I you know, it's usually a hit or miss with Pinot Noirs for me. Um, but Soho, sorry, you know, as as Hubby would say, not a pretty Timmy moment. So this definitely is not a um uh, one that I would actually um, bring home again um, or even, um, you know, want to have here. Like once this is done, it'll probably be done. It's, it's not nasty. I will drink it, um, but it's just not something that I would repeat to have back at the house. But Pinot Noir in and of itself is also a great, um, that is an acquired taste. 
for those who prefer Pinot Noir. But um, I can tell you that depending on where it's grown will definitely determine um, the palate for it. So with that said, thank you for joining Spirit Scrutiny today. And thank you for um, listening and learning about Pinot Noir. And uh, if you actually liked this episode and like to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe to get notifications for more. Now, next week, we will be discussing Malbec, which is my favorite wine. So see you then. Let's have a toast for the real